HQ presented by Caesar Sportsbook. We're going to pick every game against the spread. I'm Chris Hassel. We'll get to Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco in just a second. Week 8, beginning with the biggest matchup of the season at this point. The 7-0 Cards hosting the 6-1 and Panthers, uh, Packers rather, in a matchup of long winning streaks. Just the 10th time since the merger back in 1970 that we've had two teams entering with winning streaks of six or more. And the favorite has covered just once. The Cardinals are the favorite in this one, giving six at home. Week 8 in the NFL starts off with a big one as the first place Green Bay Packers head to the desert to take on the NFL's only unbeaten team, the Arizona Cardinals. The season couldn't have started out much worse for the Packers, blown out by the Saints in Week 1, but have since won six straight and appear to be well positioned to make another run at the Super Bowl behind their superstar quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. I'm proud of our guys, the way we're playing getting contributions from a lot of different guys. Coming into the season, the Arizona Cardinals were picked to finish last in the NFC West. Seven weeks in, they still have a goose egg in the loss column and their quarterback, Kyler Murray, playing at an MVP level. Hopefully, you know, we understand what the task at hand and we come ready to play on Thursday. The Cardinals haven't even made it to the playoffs since 2015, but just making it won't satisfy this team. And assuming they get there, they'll likely have to go through a team like the Packers to play at SoFi in February. Will Kyler lead the high-flying Cardinals to a perfect 8-0 record at home, or will Rodgers make it seven straight for the Packers? The stage is set for a great one as Week 8 is about to kick off. Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco both heating up with their picks as well. Coming off a, a good week. Pete, back-to-back -back good weeks for you. Yeah, that's a surprise. Pete's um, found his flow. He, re yeah. he really has. He's found his stride, found his flow. And you're kind of riding that flow, too. I mean, you uh, had an even better he, week. Than, he beat me last week. Yeah. Right. Well, again, I, I just want to have one perfect week. That's all I care about. I, the, the rest of the year, all I'm focusing on is having one perfect week. Brinson had a perfect and, week and, and, and last by week. The way, by the way, perfectly bad. And then I just retire, and I, I never come back in here again. Yeah, you don't want to do the Brinson. <laughs> That's when you almost you're perfect the other way. Uh huh. You don't want to do. He that. literally Winless. missed every single pick. It was two and twelve. If two weeks ago, two and twelve. If not for the two point conversion in the Eagles game and the Jaguars late field goal in London, he goes zero and fourteen. Wow. It's hard to do. That's, you that's still have a, a little bit of a leg up on Brady, but Brady is above five hundred in his picks against the spread. We're going to pick Packers and Cardinals, and this is a, a bigger line than some would expect. Though the Packers are missing uh, Devonte Adams, possibly. And they're definitely missing Alan Lazard, who's missing this game. But, boy, six points is a lot for Aaron Rodgers. Which was the movement that we initially heard when Adams was potentially going to be ruled out of this. Now, it seems unlikely he will play at this point, Tom, given the fact that he's going to have two negative tests in a 24-hour period, which it seems, again, unlikely. So they're going to be going without Devontae Adams, who really encompasses about 41% of their receiving yards this year. That's a huge chunk for any one player. And Alan Lazard as well. Uh, it's going to be a tough challenge, and I think in particular if the Green Bay Packers defense, Pete, can't slow down Kyler Murray, the passing attack, the ability for the running backs to, to get out in space and make some plays, and they're playing on the road. Uh, and so I, I look at this matchup and I say, I'll lay the six points. I don't feel great about it because I thought initially that line movement from three or four to six was already too much. But I'm rolling with the hot hand. I'm going with the hot team that is the Arizona Cardinals. I think I keep waiting for them to have that game where we say, all right, they're, they're starting to kind of cool off. They're starting to settle down a little bit. But I don't want to pick against them in this case. I, I just I feel like it's a tough matchup for the Green Bay Packers given the circumstances. It's a very tough matchup, and uh, but I'm going with them. We're, we're on the other side right from the start. I love it that way. And the reason I'm going with them is because I think Rodgers could line up and throw to us three and still complete passing. Well, and, and, and to that point, hey, you look at that. complete it, but no one's running anywhere. No, no. Since Matt Particularly me. Took over. It's, it's, He's 6-0 and without Devontae Adams. Of course he is. And, and remember, when Adams wasn't there, uh, he, he has a tendency to use Aaron Jones as almost like a receiver, slot back type Tanyan, of player. Hogan. Tanyan. They'll move the football. I'm not worried about that. It's where their defense is. And the defense played well last week, but that's Washington. They moved in between the 20s, but they kept them out of the end zone. Uh, I think they'll be able to – They'll. they won't slow the Cardinals down all the way, but I think the Cardinals will win the game. But you're giving me six points and Aaron Rodgers – I'm taking it. I, even if Adams isn't there, I think he's going to throw the Chandler football. Chandler Jones right. coming back. The Cardinals getting healthier. I mean, that kind of adds to it too. If I it wasn't, if it. it was a Sunday night or Sunday game, I'd probably really lean to the Packers. I like the Packers, but I'd strongly lean to the Packers. But it's a short week. It's tough to get your bearings about you on the road. So, By the way, I'm still taking the Packers. I like the under in this one just because I think we're going in this anticipating both teams scoring a lot. I, I am. 
You are, but I think if Green Bay is going to score a lot, to me, they've got to be able to establish the rushing attack. I don't know that they're going to be able to do that versus Arizona on the road. I do think that's going to be part of this, though, is we're going in thinking, all right, what are they going to do? You know Matt LaFleur wants to run the football. He comes from that tree under Kyle Shanahan, so they're going to have some ways of trying to get mixed in some runs, play action pass, things off of that. I think it's going to eat up some clock. It's going to shorten this game, and I think you're going to see some balance, too, from, from Kyler Murray and the Cardinals as well. See, you're thinking that way. I hope they don't think that way, and here's why. Be who you are. And I know he wants to run the ball, but be who you are. If you get in this situation, you say, okay, I don't have my re receiver here. I don't know if my defense can slow them down as much as I'd like. Let's run the ball and control the clock. Next thing you know, you look up and you're down 10 nothing. you got to be who you are. But that's on your defense. I mean, well, at some point, you've got to rely on your defense to be able to get stops. Can they rely on that defense? I, I, we're going to find out, aren't well, we? We'll <laughs> like, like, this is one of those games where we're going to find out yeah. on the short week on the road. Cardinals win. It's close, and it's high scoring. We disagree on both sides of this one. I actually gave an over-under pick on this one, too. Did you? Pete, yeah. uh, these are your top two teams in your power ranks. Yeah, number right? one's on the line right here. Number they, one, They're Cardinals, playing number for two, my Green number Bay. one spot. That's what they're so, playing so for. So let me ask you this. If Arizona wins but doesn't cover the spread, are they still number one? Yes, absolutely. All right. I mean, absolutely. There's, the, there's the age-old adage, all right, good teams win, great teams cover. Well, well, that's for our business. <laughs> <laughs> Rodgers has lost three straight against the Arizona Cardinals. Again, that's the Thursday night game. Let's move to Sunday now. The 49ers really struggling. The Bears have a better record than the Niners, but the Bears, uh, uh, hard to believe they're a better team than the 49ers right now, the way we saw them look this past week. Yeah, not the way the offense looks right now. And even the defense is taking a step back. But, you know, Matt Nagy on the COVID list, uh, potentially maybe misses this game. That might be a good thing for the Chicago Bears <laughs> at this point. Uh, you, you hope health-wise all that he's okay. Right. But in, in all yeah. seriousness, the way this thing's operating right now, uh, maybe they could find a flow or something better on offense. No Khalil Mack on defense. They've struggled mightily. Um, but, you know, you look at the, the San Francisco 49ers, they haven't won in a month. And so clearly that's a team that's searching for something. I still think Jimmy Garoppolo is, is the best quarterback for that position. I know there's a lot of talk right now, Pete, about whether or not he's going to be in there. What other option do they have at this point? Defensively, I think, is where they've been disappointing. You know, they haven't really gotten back to that NFC Championship, you know, Super Bowl like caliber type defense that we've seen from this team in, in some period of time when they got to a Super Bowl. That's where I'm wondering if that group doesn't step up, see the opportunity they have here just to absolutely demolish the Chicago Bears offensive line. I agree. I think that offensive line was it's bad and it gets worse by the week. They let two starting tackles go in the offseason and they haven't improved there. And I think that's a problem for him. And Justin Fields holds the football. Nick Bosa was a non-factor the other night. Non-factor. Didn't do much against the, Eric the Fisher. The weather was tough. I didn't against Eric Fisher. I didn't know. do much. It's time for him to start playing up to his expectations as well. I think they will in this game. I think they get after Justin Fields, force the turnovers, get some short fields. People will be booing. They'll be asking for Andy Dalton back in the lineup in Chicago because Justin Fields isn't playing well. And back to Jimmy Garoppolo. Everybody wants to – you can't evaluate him on that rain game the other day. I mean, that was awful. The conditions like were terrible. Hurricane. Yeah, it was terrible. So, bomb cyclone, right? Yeah, bomb They're cyclone. Bomb cyclone. So let's see what he does in a non-bomb cyclone yeah. situation this week. And then before you start evaluating, say it's time to get him out of there. Over under set of 39 and a half. That I don't is think really low. I don't think he's going to do much. <laughs> exactly. Is there I, another I, bomb cyclone I'm coming to Chicago? Over. I think San Francisco puts up some points. I think the Bears will score a little or enough to be able to hit that over in this one. Yeah. Bears have hit the uh, under in their last six games. This is the lowest total of the season at 39 and a half. All right, moving on to a big spread, the biggest of the weekend. Rams minus 14 and a half on the road taking on the Texans. Yeah, I fell victim to looking at last week, that Rams spread, thinking, oh, it's too much. You know, they're not going to be able to cover that number versus the Detroit Lions. Um, and, and I think, uh, I believe I switched, right? And the Lions yeah, did actually cover Yeah, you pulled the old them. switcheroo. Yeah, it didn't work out for me. didn't work out for me. I was, I was one of the misses last week. Uh, but I am on, on the side of the Rams here. I do think they'll be able to cover versus the Texans. This is a team that, even if you know Tyrod Taylor's back, I, I, I still don't think he's going to provide them enough offensive firepower to compete with what we've seen from the connection of Matt Stafford to Cooper Cup and the rest of the wide receivers there. And the defense hit, is hitting on all cylinders. So, huge line, but the, but the reality is we've seen a lot of double-digit victories over the past couple of weeks. 75% of the games last week were won by double digits. So, don't let that number scare you. Rams, and by the way, play the under, because I think the Rams are the only team scoring points in this one. I agree with you. I think this is a tough spot for the Texans. Davis Mills is going to start again. It's almost like here. 
We'll, we'll make you the sacrificial lamb like we did at Buffalo earlier in the season. He's not going to play well against this defense. Their offensive line isn't very good right now. And the Rams will score their points because that Texas defense isn't good either. You know, last week, big number against Arizona, and they covered it. I mean, 20. It was 20, and they covered the number. I think the Rams will go in there and cover this number as well. Look at that number at the bottom there. Davis Mills, as a double-digit dog, has been outscored 102 to 8 in those games. Has failed to cover. Pete's not claiming him anymore. Oh, I Was. claim him. I still think he's got talent. I mean, I, what, look what he's playing with. It's, it's yeah. nothing. Well, Brandon Cooks isn't anything to bat an eye at. And? <laughs> yeah, you would ask that right. Okay, you're, you're working on the Packers right now. And? Right, but he isn't Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, says Pete Frisco. No. Uh, okay, let's move on to the Panthers and Falcons. Boy, the Panthers have lost four in a row. Uh, I was surprised to see uh, Jason Lockenfora put out a list of all the teams that he's already eliminated from playoff contention. And JLC has already eliminated the Falcons, who are, win this game, and they're above 500. Yeah, they're, they're right there, kind of in the mix. Maybe they can climb back to a wild card spot. I think the wild card race is wide open in the NFC, outside of the loser between Arizona and right. the L.A. Rams. That but after that, mm-hmm. I mean, the Saints are in that mix, but I think the Falcons could be, too. They're starting to kind of find their rhythm now. You see the impact of Kyle Pitts, the mismatch he can create. Uh, I like the Falcons in this one. Like, two and a half points. I know a divisional game, but they're playing at home. They should be able to cover that number, even though the Panthers' defense – is good offensively. Look, Donald got benched last week. P.J. Walker came in, didn't provide them any sort of a lift. So at this point, uh, I, I love the Falcons putting up enough points to get the win here, and I like the over. So I think the Falcons will be able to score a lot. Halloween weekend, Sam Darnold. Ooh, he, he sees, sees ghosts. ghosts. Uh, he, he sees he sees the sky because he's on his back a lot. Uh, yeah. The offensive line is terrible. Uh, it's really bad. They were our uh, spinning top of the week last week, remember? And they've earned that. And then last week, the left tackle, who was one of the spinning tops, Cam Irvin, didn't play. They put Brady Christensen in at left tackle, and he was worse. They're bad on the offensive line, and he, has, he can't do anything back there. The Falcons are the better team, and Matt Ryan's actually playing really good football this season, and people are, don't pay attention to it. The Falcons, how can you eliminate them? The Falcons and the Vikings, one of those two teams is likely going to be the last wild card team. I, I think three and three right now. Yeah, I think one of those two will be the last wild card team, and I think the Falcons. So get you're a leg assuming up. the Saints get in. Yes. Okay. Uh, I I could see the Atlanta leapfrogging the Saints based on just really? how that offense looks at, at certain wow. points in time. Ooh. I know it that's sounds a like a hot hint, take. That's a little hint at who you're picking later on this show. Maybe we'll see. Saints Bucks <laughs> uh, a little bit later. By the way, Kyle Pitts, first rookie <laughs> tight end with back-to-back 100-yard games since Raymond Chester. Remember him? I do. Raymond Chester was good. Yeah. 1970 Raiders. Played for the Raiders, and he played I, I for the. I did not remember he, him. He also played for the Colts. You weren't alive for no, that. No. Yeah, were you? But Pete, <laughs> been covering I the mean, NFL. David Chester in today's game would have been a monster. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Let's a lot, move on. A lot of old guys say stuff like that. It, so. Move on to the Eagles and Lions and, and Brady. Last week I reminded you of what you said. You're never taking the Lions again, and so you flip flop. You didn't take the Lions, and the Lions ended up covering. I know. But I know. Uh, only getting three points at home here against the Eagles. Yeah, I'm willing to take it, though. They're at home. I, I don't feel great about where the Eagles are at either. So He's back! I'm back. Uh, I can't seem to figure this team out, all right? At times, they fight when they don't think they're going to. They end up keeping it close. I think they get their first win. I, I just I think they're going to get their first win. I, I don't think much of where the Eagles are at. I'm sorry. Offensively, they've struggled mightily. I, I kind of thought they might be a... Uh, under the radar team that's in the mix for potentially trading for Deshaun Watson. They do have the draft capital to do so. It doesn't sound like Deshaun Watson wants to be there with that no trade clause only allowing it to be to Miami. But all that being said, I, I just think if you look at the Lions, they've been competitive. They showed fight. I think they can keep this thing close. I don't even know if they outright win it. But I'll take the three points, and, and at this point, I'm going to say the under because I, 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 don't, I don't think either of these offenses are very good. No, I don't either. And, and I was on the Lions last week. I took those points because you know why? Dan Campbell called me and told me he was going to play like it was the Super Bowl. He's going to play to win. <laughs> Onside did. kicks. How, how much fun was that? That was fun to see. I mean, it was a desperate team. They did yeah. desperate they things. Hard, I like it. Man. Yeah, they, they do, do play hard. That's something that's good for the future. What's not good for now is his team. They're not very good. They play hard. They're not talented. The Eagles are playing back-to-back road games outside the division, which I hate. But, but I'm not taking the Lions oh. this week. I, I got them last week. They won for me. You're going to be miserable next week because they're not going to win for you. I'll take the Eagles and Jalen Hurts uh, minus the points. I was really disappointed when I came and I found out Pete took the Eagles. <laughs> I, I, I thought, I was like, at least Pete will be with you on this one this week. 
All right, right, let's uh, let's let's take a look at what the guys like for the uh, Thursday night game and some of the early games on Sunday. And there is some agreement here. Agreement on the 49ers minus three and a half in Chicago. The Rams minus a big number, 14 and a half at the Houston Texans and the Atlanta Falcons to not only win, but cover the two and a half against the Panthers. And that would put Atlanta over 500. Coming up next, we're going to hit the early slate on CBS, which includes a uh, now very big matchup. Carson Wentz has the, the Colts moving in the right direction, and those Titans coming off back-to-back -back huge wins. This hour of CBS Sports HQ presented by Caesar Sportsbook, giving us the lines and the totals for our early games on CBS. Uh, a couple of good matchups here, the Titans at the Colts, Tennessee, just a one-point favorite, virtual pick them there. And the Steelers and Browns, Pittsburgh fighting their way back. Cleveland uh, coming off that feisty win last Thursday night. Not sure if they're going to have Baker Mayfield as of yet, but they're getting Nick Chubb back in the lineup. All right, we got Pete Frisco and Brady Quinn here. I'm Chris Hassel. We're picking the games. Let's start with the Titans and the Colts. The Titans are good. Are giving one point on the road against uh, an Indianapolis team. The Boy, they win this game, and they're feeling like they're a playoff team again. Boy, the narrative about the Colts right now is so different than from the first couple of weeks when we saw them play. Carson Wentz is playing some of his better football. I mean, last week was a little bit sloppy, I think, for both them and San Francisco, so you can't take too much away from that. But, look, even though the Tennessee Titans defense has improved, I think there's some opportunities here for Carson Wentz and this Colts offense. Divisional matchup, they've always played each other tough. And I, and I am questioning, Pete, how much longer can Derrick Henry kind of stay on this pace in carrying the Tennessee Titans game, so, or uh, Titans offense? Give me the point. I'm, I'm taking the home team here. This is more of a home team play for me, but I'll take the point. I'll take the Colts. Uh, and I think an under. I think a lower scoring game than what we're thinking. Yeah, I'm on the other side on this one. I, I, I think what the Titans did last week on Finally defense. Finally bought in on the Titans. Yeah. Well, the defense played really well last they've got a lot. They've got a lot better. They really them. have. They've improved on defense, and that's the most important thing. We know what they do on offense. They want to run the ball, and the offensive line's playing better. Even though they, you know, they have some injuries up there, they played better last week. You want to run the ball with Henry. You want to take your shots down the field, and I think they'll be able to do that. The Colts still give up a lot of passing yards. And the other night they didn't because it was raining, but they give up a lot of passing yards. I think there's going to be opportunity to do that uh, it, with the play action off of that. And I don't know. Look, Wentz played well the last couple weeks. The other night, if it wasn't for interference penalties, we'd be looking at his numbers saying, okay. And rain had an issue. Rain was a factor. I'm going to give it's him It's not going to be a factor in this game. No, it won't be, which is why uh, I think mm. that uh, you're going to see Brian Tannehill have a good game, too. I, I like the Titans to win this game, and I think they take a real – grasp of the division. They win this game. Yeah. Uh, beat them it's twice. a smooth sailing. It's, yeah, it's, it's their over. division. The division's done. That's one of the things I think we've noticed right now within the NFL big picture. There's a lot of divisions that you kind of feel like are already wrapped up and done. If, if the Titans, to your point, if they win this game, you can check them as well. The division winner, now it's the Colts looking for a wild card spot. One quick thing on the Titans. Bud Dupree starting to look like Bud Dupree again. He looked great last week. And that's a, that's a good How one. much of that, though, has to do, and we talk about the Titans, but how much of that has to do with the lack of a pass rush from the Chiefs? And the way, you know, just in general, you know, how, how they play. Yeah, yeah I get it. They don't, yeah, I get it. We'll talk about the Chiefs because we've got a little hint. we got some interesting stuff on oh, the Chiefs. Oh, do we? Oh, is it? Oh, oh I can't wait yeah. for that then. Oh, I think yeah. I know what you might Oh, mean. yeah. Uh, by the way, this Titans-Colts game is a rematch of uh, a game earlier this season. The Titans won by nine. It was Wentz's worst performance of the season, but he was still a, a little bit banged up then. He, it'll be interesting to see how they do now that he's somewhat healthy again as the Colts try to get it back to 500. Here's one thing about the Colts huh? real quick. Imagine if they didn't get their field goal blocked at Baltimore, how you'd be thinking about them right now. Right? Yep. Yeah. No, they're, they're, play, they're playing well. We, we've talked about uh, divisions that are kind of uh, already you know, being you know, taken. Decided. For the lack of a better <laughs> word, yes. Uh, decided, like, like the NFC East. You look at the AFC East. And somehow the Patriots, the way they play, they're only a game behind the Buffalo Bills, who are sitting there at 4-2. and two. This seems like the get-right spot for them, though, uh, with a one-game lead in the division. You'd think so. I mean, especially considering the matchups with the Dolphins' defense versus the Buffalo Bills. And as much man-to-man -man as the Dolphins like to play, that should play right into the wheelhouse of all those mismatches on the outside and Josh Allen to have a big game. Uh, I'm on the side of the Bills. Now, this is a huge number for a divisional matchup. And, and also, by the way, Tua has been playing that bad since he's come back. He, he gets a lot of flack because they're not winning. But the reality is it's not on him. It's on that defense. And that's why I'm with the Bills. I think this field is slanted heavily towards the Bills offense, giving them the advantage and the opportunity. 
and, and at 49 total points for this one, I'm taking the over. I think the Bills will put up a number of points, and I think that the Dolphins will be able to move the ball a little bit too and score some points. I like Buffalo. Last time out, down they played. They played down here. They knocked two out of that game. Remember, he yeah. left the game in the second quarter, nothing. and they were a disaster after that. And they didn't even play that well that day, and they dominated them. This is a team that's been stewing for two weeks. Remember, they lost to the yeah. Titans. Yeah. They're not happy about it. They had the bye week. They come back in a division rival. Here's the biggest mismatch. The pass rush of the Buffalo Bills off offensive against line. that offensive line. That offensive line is bad. And everybody, you're right. Two is actually playing some good football. The offensive line's terrible. His receivers, remember, we're going to have a track meet outside. Yeah, they pull a hamstring every Tuesday, those guys. And he hasn't had his Boy, receivers all year long. can't hold on to the football long enough to even make those throws. No, but, but he doesn't time. have them anyways. Those guys right. are never there. Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, do they ever play? They never play. So I think it's worked against Tua, and he's actually played well for all the Dolphin fans out there. It's your offensive line. The offensive line stinks. Then you get a lead. The defense falls apart in that last drive. So... I think Buffalo gets right. You're exactly 100% accurate on that. This is their get-right moment. Career-high four touchdown passes for Tua last week, and this week dealing with all the, uh, the trade rumors surrounding Deshaun Watson. Uh, that game's at 1 Eastern on CBS, as is this next game, an interesting one, interesting one in the AFC North. Steelers have worked their way back to 500. Browns are 4-3, and three, right now holding on to that last wild-card spot. Winner of this game will have the last wild-card spot heading to November. This game concerns me for the Browns. I don't know why. I think it's maybe because the Pittsburgh Steelers are starting to find a little bit of a flow, too, offensively, defensively. I think they went, we know what they've always presented. Even though the Browns should have Nick Chubb back for this one, we don't know about Baker Mayfield. And, Pete, I'll ask you this. Is that a good thing, bad thing, if, if Mayfield's plan is not 100%? Because Case Keenum looked all right. This team's had extra time to prepare for this matchup. Uh, I'm going to take the three and a half points. I think if this was that three, I might be on the side of Cleveland. I hate the hook, divisional game. I think I'm on the side of, of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll take the three and a half points and low scoring game here under that 42 and a half. I'm with you. I took the Steelers too. I, I just think, what do the Browns want to do? They want to run the football. The Steelers are actually pretty good against the run. They're middle of the pack, but they're giving up 100 yards a game. The Browns need more than that to win this game. Uh, you know, no Baker Mayfield. Uh, is there really that much of a drop off? Is this? If, it, it didn't look like that on Thursday Night Football. Correct. So if he plays, if he if if he doesn't play and they play well without him, is hey, this? Is this Brady's on this full screen. He won an O against the Steelers wow. since Big Ben was drafted in 04. Yep. That's the only, is that the only team you have a winning record against? Uh, no, there might be like one or two. Might <laughs> <laughs> be one or two others. I know, but that's a good one to have one against. I'll tell you that. Not out of playoffs that year. There you go. And so I, I think if if what if they play well without Baker Mayfield? Is that a message about the contract? I mean, that's for you to take it. I think he should get the contract, but but I know you're going to be the contrarian. <laughs> I to that. mean, I like Baker Mayfield. I think he's a good quarterback. You just can't pay him the mega contract of those guys that we've been seeing lately, and that's the concern. It's like the it. cost of milk right now, man. It just yeah. keeps going up and up so and up and up. So do you think they're going to end up having to pay him over $40 million a season? I don't know about over $40 million. I, I think You're going to pay Baker paid. Mayfield $40 million a season? You're not asking me. It's not my money. Well, but I'm saying that's okay, the going rate, the, that's the going the, rate for a franchise. I'm putting you in the part, seat. Part of this is actually a product of the franchise tag. Part of this has to do with the fact that now, as, as a player gets closer to the end of his contract, You've got the franchise tag year one and two that you're looking at as the structure of the floor of that negotiation. I get it, Brady. So you could say, like, well, he's not worth it. Well, it doesn't matter because the mechanism's already there in the franchise tag that makes it worth it where you say, well, we can play this thing out. I'll, I'll play under my fifth year. I'll play it two years under the tag. You're going to pay it to me one way or another. So why, do, why, why don't I help you out and I'll sign a long-term deal yeah. now and we'll make it more economical for you. Because in three years, you might not like that deal. And, 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 that's, and that's the risk that the team takes. Oh. But they get control over him, right? It's it. not a year-to-year -year deal. I get it. I still, I don't, that's a risky proposition. I like Baker Mayfield, I, but I think in the way they play football, I think sometimes he's almost more of a game manager than he is a quarterback. So, but they'll, they'll, the Steelers will stay in this game. I think the Browns will win it, but the Steelers will stay in it. I'll take the Steelers. The yeah, like I said, if it goes down to three, a lo little different bet right. here. But Correct. because it's three and a half, Correct. I'm willing to take, take the three Steelers. And a half. Okay, now to the number one team in the AFC, the Cincinnati Bengals. And they are giving 10 on the road at the Jets. Pete, you're the football historian here. <laughs> When's the last time the Bengals have laid this many points on the road? Oh, Just take a guess oh, wow. for a year. Uh, 19, what's the last time they were in the Super Bowl when Boomer was there? Was it in the 80s? Yeah. 1983. Yeah. There you go. There you go, Pete. Before I was born. Wow. That wasn't, that might not even have been that team. It's been a while. Yeah. That, that, look, this is a good team. You know, I had to take a shot at you two on Twitter. 
this week. About well, look, you're taking victory laps. What about shot are you taking? <laughs> you want credit for a prediction that we're not even there yet. <laughs> yeah, but you were mocking me for the prediction. Well, the prediction, We're still mocking way, you for the prediction. No, the if prediction, you guys don't know, one, the prediction was that Joe Burrow would win multiple, multiple. titles one. over the next 10 years. It was we one. That a year ago. We're going to get that tape. Multiple people have co-signed on the fact that you get said me the tape. multiple. We will. I said one. Addie Roberts not, are already, already uh, weighed in on that. I, right. I said one, it's Joseph. I said one, if not two. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Adi Joseph. Oh, Joseph, sorry. sorry. I don't know if Roberts is my name. <laughs> but the, look, they're playing great football. He was outstanding. Somebody knew, last too, week. by the way. He was outstanding last week. Sure. sure. He was great. It was, it was the best performance he's had as, as a you know, NFL quarterback right now. And what they threw at him was a lot of what they threw at Justin Herbert the week before, and he reacted to it and played well. They designed some great plays. I thought the game plan was good. And defensively, they're good. You know, you look at the down two guys, they're stopping the run. You look at the pass rushers, they get after the quarterback. The next level, Logan Wilson and Pratt are both playing well. The corners, the Woozy is playing really good football. And Bates, Bates and Wilson didn't even play well last week and they had a good day. So this is a good team. I don't think they're in that p- position to have a letdown. And the Jets stink. Let's be real. Mike White, Jets are terrible. It's a tough spot for Mike White to be in, I think, in part because of what you mentioned. And this is the difference for me. Look, Joe Burrow is the number one overall pick. He had the greatest college football season we've ever seen. Your prediction and your fandom of him wasn't any different from anyone else. You just went out on a limb and said, hey, he's going to win multiple Super Bowls in the next 10 years. That's why we and, remembered it. And, 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 and here's won. the deal. Here's the deal. It could be right. We don't know yet. I would wait to do your victory lap until it, it actually it, happens. It, but it looks better than it the did reality before is, the season. The reality is if Joe Burrow wins multiple Super Bowls in the next nine years now, since you said that a year ago, it's not going to all be because of him. No, of course It's not. because of that defense. That defense now is one that he doesn't have to win in a shootout every single week. The additions they've made the past two years, to me, have been the biggest difference on this team where you're watching them going, oh, they can actually get some stops now. I mean, we knew Joe Burrow was special. But now you combine that with Jamar Chase, who, and this is, and, and, and is going to sound like a lot. I'm not, I'm not comparing him directly to this player. Well, I used to grow up watching Jerry Rice as a kid. He was my favorite football player ever. That's who Jamar Chase reminds me of. The way he moves, the way they're similar in size. He's a I little stocky, not I as see tall. It. I see it. The way he's he not catches as lean the ball, as he's not as lean as him. No, he, he's a little he's a little shorter and stockier, but he's more explosive. But the way they run the routes, the yeah. way he catches the ball I early on in his there's career, some, there's some similarities. there's some similarities that I see in that. And I'm like, this kid's special. And with Burrow for a long time, they will be. With that defense, though. No doubt about it. They're, they're, they're going to be tough to beat this season. That's high praise in my world, by the way, because Jerry Rice is the greatest football player ever played. And, exactly. And I'm not, I'm not making a direct comparison. He reminds me of yeah. watching film. I am surprised this line isn't bigger. Because you've got Mike White with his first NFL start. I know, it, you know the Jets are hosting, but they're, they're playing awful right now. I'm surprised this isn't closer to 12 and a half, 13 and a let half. Down, let down number. Maybe. I'll, I'll easily the lay down. the 10 points, though. And I by the way, it. lay the over. The Bengals are going to score a bunch yeah. of this one. I like okay. that. Uh, by the way, 81 and 88 when the Bengals won the uh, AFC, 1983 was the, the year that they've, the last year they've laid this many points on the road. 10 at the Jets. They agree on the Bengals. They agree on the Steelers. They agree on the Bills as I work uh, down to up. Moving on when we come back. A game that we foreshadowed a little bit. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady facing Jameis Winston and the Saints. Bucks had problems with the Saints during the regular season last year. If the Saints could pull it off, They'd be in first. HQ presented by Caesars Sportsbook giving us the lines for the afternoon games on Sunday. A couple of them on CBS, including the Chargers hosting the Patriots, Jags and Seahawks. Over on Fox, Bucks minus five in Nolans, and Washington against Denver as well. Let's pick them with Brady Quinn and Pete Prisco, and let's start with the Patriots and the Chargers. You remember this game last year? It was uh, week 13, I believe. The Patriots won 45-0. It was the worst loss in Chargers franchise history. Yeah, that won't be the case uh, <laughs> okay. this week. Uh, no. Look, I think the Chargers win this game. At five and a half points, though, I think the Patriots can keep it close. I, I really like what Mac Jones has done. Uh, I think they're doing a lot with a the little. They're starting to involve the tight ends a little bit more, too, in their offense. So, I think they'll find a way of making this, at least in my opinion, a low-scoring game, slow things down, possess the football, try to limit some of those big shots that Justin Herbert, and you know the Chargers want to do, just taking chunks downfield. Uh, and so, look, it, it, if that's the case, five and a half points, a little bit too much. I think we're underrating this Patriots team right now. Yeah, I'm on the other side on this one. I think coming, coming off their bye, the Chargers are going to be one of those teams 
two weeks out. Last two weeks ago, they were terrible at Baltimore. I think they've uh, stewed for a couple weeks. They'll react to it. Uh, there are probably even more Patriots fans, in, <laughs> Patriots fans inside that building than Chargers fans. Um, Nothing new for the Chargers. No, they're used to it. But I, I think Herbert is going to play really well. He didn't play well against Baltimore. And he struggled with a lot of things they did. And I know Belichick throws well, a lot of stuff. Well, maybe you don't throw at Marlon Humphrey on two consecutive fourth down conversions you need. I don't care if it's Mike Williams or Keenan Allen. The, the Bengals threw at him last week, and they destroyed Marlon Humphrey. But I think this is going to be a game to get right with the Chargers, and they'll cover the number by seven. I think Mac Jones is due for a stinker. He really is. And if you watch it. so even keel, though, you know? Yeah, but he's due for a stinker. And, and they're, Why is it this game? Because I think, if anything, they're going to try to neutralize some of what Joey Bose and some of the other rushers can do on that defense. I just think he's due for a stinker. Just, just okay. that, file that one in. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> filing that away. I'm filing that. With the one in I'm going to write down right now, Pete Prisco, <laughs> stinker. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, well, no, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm writing it down next <laughs> okay. to it. It says right. Pete All Prisco, right. stinker. Okay. 405 Eastern Time on CBS, Patriots and Chargers. If you don't get that game and you are getting a late game on CBS, it's Jags and Seahawks. Boy, we haven't really talked about uh, the Jaguars and Urban Meyer for a, a couple of weeks, right? I mean, it, look, you win a game, yep. you, you have a bye week, and yep. things kind of go away. Well, they kind of go away, but, you know, they got two weeks to prepare now for what is a pretty bad Seattle Seahawks defense. Um, I think you look at their, their last week's game, a lot of that had to do probably more with the wind conditions and all that, the limited some stuff. Uh, but it's, it's, it's tough, though. I, I think they can be competitive in this one because there will be some opportunities for them. Uh, Geno Smith, you know, say whatever you want about, you know, how he played. Uh, the reality is they want to run the football. They don't want to let him take too many risks. And they were trying to get back to that old school style of play. And it's, it's just not going to work. The bottom line is not going to work. But three points for the Jags at home, they've got some home field advantage there. It hasn't worked out for the Seahawks so far this year. It will in this game. I'm going to lay the three points. Uh, but I do think this game hits the over. Here, I'll Bad cover Gino. streak by Gino. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, I'll, I'll talk about Urban Meyer. Did you see what he said last week when he came back? He said he watched, he got a chance on Sunday to, to watch the NFL games, and he learned some things. <laughs> From watching games on Sunday? <laughs> what are you learning? You're an NFL head coach. Not, you're always looking for other things you can oh, play. Oh, Brady. And that's why Brady, they call it a Brady. copycat league for a reason. I know. Brady, bro. He got taken. Trust too. me. Week after or day after the game, we'd always look at certain offenses and we try to pull from I what get they it. were doing. Well, you, have a the bunch next of, following week. you have a bunch of tape to watch, too, don't you? Like right at your fingertips? You always have a ton of tape. That, that's, what, that's what he's doing, though. No, he was, said he was watching. He sat at home and watched the games on Sunday. Like, like we do. First time he he, he could have come down here and he could have spent time with us in the green room. He just wants an interview with him. No, I don't. I don't care. I don't care. But this is my concern with the Jaguars. They're a young team coming off a bye, going on a road trip to a place that's hard. Hard to play. It's tough to play there, and I don't think they're going to be able to handle it. I'll take Seattle minus the Seattle's point. Seattle's dying for a win at home. Yes, they have to have it. Their they season, have to have Their it. season's done if they don't win. We know the Jaguars' season's done, but the Seattle season yeah. is done if they don't and win. And maybe Russell Wilson doesn't even come back if they keep losing. Maybe just uh, – Oh, he's coming back. back. But, I mean, if you're sitting there he, at two – You can only have eight. so many imaginary huddles before <laughs> games. <so. laughs> imaginary two-minute drills. <laughs> Diving for the pylon! <laughs> right, let's move. Well, you got to stick the ball out like he does. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, let's move on to the Bucks and the Saints. Six and one Bucks, four and two Saints. Uh, Tampa – Minus five, struggled with uh, the Saints in the regular season last year. Got swept by them. No Drew Brees there this time around. Yeah, and they're a little banged up, and I think that, that's one of the reasons why I think the Saints will be able to hang around in this one. Sean Payton's done as good a job of anyone at being able to work around some of the issues they've had. I mean, how many touches does Alvin Kamara get in this game? Oh, man. I mean, at what point you have to ask yourself, what were the Seahawks doing? You're on a two-minute drive. You're allowing these dump downs to Kamara to the point where he literally just catches it, turns around. There's no within 10 yards and he runs it in the end zone. I, I'm just I'm sitting there thinking to myself, the Bucks will match up better versus the Saints, and I think this is going to be a Bucks win. But I think the Saints can keep it close. I think they keep it within this number. I'm on the side of the Saints here. I'll take the five points, uh, but I think it's a low-scoring game. How did I not mention Jameis revenge game? Of course, Jamie Jamie Eisenberg loves revenge games. I don't think there's anything to him, but he loves them. Uh, you. Uh, had the other side in that game for me. I had the Saints in that game. You had you had Seattle, correct? Yes. Okay. All Jameis has to do is throw the ball out to the tight end on that last third down play, and it's a cover. It's a touchdown. It was he, uh, what was he doing, Brady? I, I don't know. It's the Jameis Winston <laughs> experience. That's, 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 that's what that's what we call it. It's amazing. Oh, it was a blitz. All you had to do was just take the snap and throw it to the tight end, and it's a touchdown. Johnson would have walked in. And I would have had the cover, but as it turns out, you got the cover. You beat me last week. Congrats! Nice There's going. Countless examples of no, that one was that was, ba- that was that was that was 
so obvious. This week, that defense beat Tom Brady up last year. Beat him up. And remember, that's when everybody's talking about, oh, maybe Tom Brady doesn't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. No, he still has it. They just beat him up. And I think they're getting better on defense. Lattimore against Evans will be fun to watch. Yep. Big on big, big physical corners. Has he done play better at the cornerback position uh, than Lattimore he's this played, year? He's, had, he's been outstanding. He's been incredible. And so I think they're going to hang, not only hang around, they're going to win the game. I think the Saints win the game. Uh, upset oh, special. Line. What's the Saints? money line? All upset right. special. All right, you're a better man than me, man. I, I just I got him covering. That's it. Yeah. Okay, uh, one more game late afternoon on Sunday, and it's Washington at Denver. Washington worst in the league against the spread this season, one and six. Yeah, and I'm not picking them, not for that reason. I just think this is a bad you know, matchup. I, I, look, I know the Broncos are banged up in some spots. A lot of spots. I, I still think they're capable of being able to cover the three-point spread at home. I, I'm not giving up on this team yet. I know in JLC's article he already said, hey, this isn't a playoff team. There's a lot of football left to be played. So I'll go ahead. I'll lay the three points. I like the over, though, in this one. I, look, Taylor Haneke showcased some ability to extend plays, make some plays with his legs. He's going to have to in this one, in my opinion. But both teams score a good amount of points, hits the over. But I think Denver covers the three-point spread here. I think he's the latest in the accident quarterback. They go back in the pocket, they take two looks and run. It's an accident. Whatever, whatever he gets with his legs is an accident. Apparently it, those accidents can be uh, effective. Look, so. he is what he is. We, we found out what he is. Like somebody once said, if you play your backup quarterback, you're probably going to go three and three. That's what they do. And well, that's he's the best a good backup, go though. He's that's what he is. That's what he is. That's what he is. But he's going to win this week because that Broncos defense is a mess right now. And we, how does Von Miller, does Von Miller play? I know he's practicing, but, or he's out there on the field. Does he play? The left tackle, Garrett Bowles, might not play. You can play. make the case this is the tonic, by the way, though, if your defense is playing poorly. Is this Washington football team offense? Yeah, and the flip side is the Washington defense hasn't played very well either, although they were better last week against the Packers. If no Bowles is in the lineup, that's big because I think they can pressure the quarterback. And Teddy Bridgewater's not very good. Let's be honest. No, he hasn't played good the last few weeks. If he just takes care of the football, they're going to be a lot. He's not very good. They're, they're like I said, he, they have, they, they they have not the solved their quarterback position in any way, shape, or form. And they're waiting I, on Aaron Rodgers. And so, <laughs> I, well, probably. Coming next year. So I would take Washington in this game. I think they win the game. All right, recapping the picks from the late afternoon games on Sunday. Pete and Brady, agreement on the Seahawks, minus three at home against the Jags and the Saints. Uh, we haven't had any lock unities yet. I don't no. Uh, That's Saints good, though. minus, uh, plus five, rather, against the Bucks. And Pete says Saints money line. They're going to win it outright. Up next to the primetime games on Sunday and Monday night, including the Cowboys coming off a bye and the highest over-under of the week. They're in Minnesota. Maybe we have some lock unity on this one. This hour of HQ presented by Caesars Sportsbook. And here are the lines for the primetime games on Sunday and Monday. Cowboys, two and a half point favorites at the Vikings on Sunday night. Ooh, Monday night are Chiefs hosting the Giants, but it is a must win. For Kansas City, Giants are coming off uh, an impressive victory, a blowout win against the Panthers. Let's pick that Sunday nighter first. Highest total of the week at 54 and a half. Uh, Cowboys given two on the road against a Vikings team that's right there in playoff contention. A lot of scoring in this one, but I got some questions for old Pete Prisco over here. Big game for Kirk. What, uh, when's this game being played? Prime time. And who are you picking? I'm not giving that pick out until you make yours. Big game. <laughs> I'm, I'm, picking the, I'm picking the Minnesota Vikings, okay? They're a home dog. I love that. Kirk Cousins has played well this year. Their defense has improved as well. We've talked about Everson Griffin for a number of weeks. So I'm taking the two and a half points here. But I think a lot of scoring. I, I like the overplay better than I do the spread here. But I'll take the two and a half if you'll give it to me. I want your answer now, Pete. I'm taking Kirk Cousins in prime time. <laughs> yes, I am. Now, why is that? Because I think the Cowboys defense is a tad on the overrated side right now. And I do think I'm in agreement with you. I think there's going to be a lot of scoring in this game. And here's another reason. The second best lineman in Coral Springs High School football is getting his Hall of Fame ring before the game, at halftime of the game. So the place is going to be erupting. Steve Hutchinson, yeah. second best offensive lineman from my school behind me. So that's why it's a special night in Minnesota, and I will take Kirk Cousins in prime I time. cannot believe this. I don't even know the man that's sitting in that chair right <laughs> well, now. Well, this is crazy. For all the years we've done this, you've never picked Kirk Cousins in a prime time. Not only but that, but it's lock unity. It is. It is. Doesn't that tell you what I think about the Cowboys defense a little bit, doesn't it? Well, I think the question really becomes big. Is Trayvon Diggs going to have another interception this week? <laughs> no. Can't. I mean, no. 
He can't keep it. Well, he keeps gambling, he does. He's going to have opportunities. He yeah. gambles. He gave up the touchdown the week the, he did. the play after. He did. That he too. admitted it. So he stayed on yeah. top. He didn't. So but he did. Certain guys said he did. Let me tell you, there's a lot of quarterbacks who've gambled, right? But they've got a lot of interceptions. And they've got paid off of that. So I'm not hating on them. But there was somebody compared him to Deion Sanders. That's an insult. Yeah. Well, who is that? Deion? I don't know. A couple of writers put it out there. Oh, Deion Sanders. No, look, please. he has been phenomenal. Great, Transition great. He's had a great year. At, at one point, being a wide receiver. He's had a great year. Two cornerback. Now in the NFL, in his, what, a second year now? I mean, he, he's made an, an unbelievable transition to that position. He's a ball hawk. Yeah. He's got not, a very He's not future. the greatest in man-to-man coverage. No one's going to compare him to Deion Sanders, no. all right? No, he's not even – when you look at his stats in terms of his man coverage, he hasn't been among the best in the league at man coverage, but he's a ball hawk, and people love ball hawks. I mentioned him with Deion Sanders last week because he has more picks already than Deion ever had. Who cares? Because here's the reality is no one wanted to throw at Deion Sanders. Very if true. people are still throwing at Trayvon Diggs, that gives you an indication of what quarterbacks actually think about him if the ball keeps going his Two way. Two-thirds of the earth is covered by water, and Deion Sanders covered the other third. That's the way it was. There you go, Petey. All right, time for my favorite part of the show, Pete Prisco's spinning top of the week. <laughs> and I went to the Kansas City Chiefs this week. It's are you going to do the whole offensive no, line? No, I'm doing the left side of the offensive oh, line, although the right tackle was terrible, can't too. Can't you just single somebody out? Well, okay, you could single somebody out because Orlando Brown was the single guy because okay. he was bad last week. And, and, and in fairness to him, there were times where they held up and Patrick Mahomes held the ball. And when Patrick Mahomes held the ball, it was a problem. But here he is in pass protection against Bud Dupree. This is just awful. He gets beat around the corner. Mahomes has to leave, okay? That's not as bad as it gets. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, but it's still not good offense. You you traded away picks to get this guy. Look at this. Inside, here I come. He doesn't make the play, but he's in there influencing the – did he even do anything? Completion. Did he I do mean, anything? It's a, it's a first down. Okay, here game. we go. Here we go. Around the corner. Here I go. Oh, I'm having problems. Down he goes. Is that on him? Yes, it is. No, that's on him. I yeah, mean, obviously you force the ball out. Force okay, ball here we go. Today. This Please. is. It's go around the corner. Here we go. That's and, on him too. And, and that's on him. That's okay. Just a bad look. Pick. And the reason well, you know, it was okay. really Joe Tooney didn't play very well either on the left side. They spent a lot of money on him. They spent a lot of draft capital on Orlando Brown, and now they got to make a decision to play him. He's got to be better. I mean, you they were go, not good enough. You want to go back through that? I want to tell you the biggest mistake that obviously Andy Reid and Eric, you know, Eric Bieniemy made. Uh, those were all five-man protections. They didn't have any help from a tight end. They didn't have <coughs> any help from a running back. If that's how your offensive line is going to play, obviously you need to make some adjustments in game. Now the reality is, they went into that game probably thinking, "Hey, we can get this done." because we haven't seen much of a pass rush for the Tennessee Titans over the past year or so, even though they have gotten better week by week by week. Uh, Harold Landry has been a part of that. Bud Dupree, as you kind of touched on. Um, so they're going to have to adjust. I mean, I'm not sure Orlando Brown's a left athlete. tackle either. And, and, that, and that's fair to question. I mean, I think it takes – it's a lot harder to transition than most realize. Right. You know, a lot of people want to act like, oh, you play tackle, you play tackle, you go either way. It's not like that. No. I mean, look at Penny Sewell, for example, a rookie who had never played right tackle. He looked awful in preseason. That was a left tackle in the NFL. He's doing all right as a rookie. Gotten better. He's yeah. gotten better. Chiefs Monday night football at home against the Giants team coming off a 25-3 win against the Panthers. Oh, Chiefs. I'm going to lay the 10 points. I mean, bottom line is it was a great win for the Giants last week. They're not going to be facing the Carolina Panthers offense. <laughs> this is the Kansas City Chiefs. If Patrick Mahomes takes care of the football, if they fix some of their protection issues, they just be able to run the football a little bit. Um, they shouldn't have any issue whatsoever. So, uh, bottom line is, you lay the 10 points, don't even think about it. I do think this game hits the under, though, because I think the Chiefs' defense will play better. I think this is the start of them not being one of the worst in the NFL. It better be. You're so much production. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm in agreement with you. I think this is a tough spot for the Giants because you're getting a team that is just wounded and is better than what they've played. I still think they're a better team than the way they've played. Defensively, they were actually a little bit better last week. The offense was terrible. I mean, the second half, they settled in. The offense, here's the problem, Brady, and you know this. Everybody's playing off. Right. And then you get down, and you're down 21 nothing. You look up, and what do you do? You start panicking. They get away from what they need to be doing. I, I think their biggest issue right now defensively, they're not getting off the field on third down. And, and, and one of the things is, when you, remember when Kansas City would get down in a game, and then their defense would come out, they get a stop, they get the ball right back, they score again. You had those quick transitions. You could get into that rhythm. You're not seeing that from this defense right now. When they score to try to climb back in a game, the other team gets the football and they just drive. And they might not always get points, but they're eating up time possession. They're switching the field position battle. And all those things are adding up to making it more difficult for Patrick Mahomes. He's pressing. He's making some bad decisions. Bad decisions. And leaving clean pockets. He leaving clean there, pockets. He's leaving he clean pockets. To. He's not making it easy on his offensive line. He's forcing balls. Here's the other thing. They held Derrick Henry to 90 yards last week. If 
right? And on the ground, yeah. If you would have said Less they're going to hold him to 90 yards to win way. the game. So but he's also going to throw for a touchdown. Well, he's going to get a couple a, of catches. Again, that's well. an accident. But uh, he, here's the thing. They need to play better on defense, and he needs to play better. Patrick Mahomes is better than he's played. You can't be a hero on every play. Check the ball down once in a while. Yeah, or or, or sort of way like he did. Look, all those interceptions aren't on him. You know, they've had no. some, no, they've had some drops. drops one, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. All, that, so. all right. The, the, Pete, you didn't pick an over-under on this one. Or, or I'm we, taking we could the have had another lock unity. I'm taking the Chiefs. What do you think? I know you're taking the Chiefs, but... No, I think it's low scoring, so I would go with you on the end oh, if you want to get locked boy. in. So he just wants are... more confetti is what, is what <laughs> yeah, we pretty much unity. We're going to get like more confetti. confetti in just a second, but yeah. pretty much unity on uh, the, the primetime games because there is lock unity on Vikings in the over, and Pete says if he's going to lean one way or the other on the total for Giants Chiefs, he would also lean to the under in that one. All right, it's a special day. It is, it is Brady's birthday. Oh, very cute. And we cute. we got, we got the one of the interns to yeah. go scrounge up all the helmets. And Could all you the fit, how'd you fit them all on there? I don't know. Is that, what is that? One, two, three, four, it's five, seven. six, seven. I see a Rams I mean, helmet I'm, hiding in the back. Though, you played for the Rams? I, I, well, I injured my back the second week I was there. I needed surgery after that. So that was, that was pretty much it. Oh, so, so wait, so you had seven helmets that you actually put on your head at some point in your career. That's correct. Seven wow. NFL helmets. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And look at, what's your favorite picture, Brady? None of them. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I mean, that's, wait. What our, that's what our graphics are. Draft night. The top right. Well, I mean, the, bottom, the bottom right is, <laughs> is angry guy on draft day. Not angry. Oh, yeah. Surprise. Angry guy. Uh, the what? one from the top right is determined backup guy. I'm not sure what I'm doing with my lip there. Okay. Your upper lip is gone. Okay. Muscle head from, from you, two from the right. What is that one, Brady? Is he in the shot? Oh, my God. No, what? I, I don't know what that is. What is that from the right? Second from the we'll right. We'll find anything if you search long enough on the internet. Hey, there's, hey, there's Pete's favorite quarterback top left <laughs> next to me in that photo. Thieves? Tim yeah. Tebow. Oh. Timmy Tebow. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, please do not call him a quarterback ever. Uh, and in. then, and then they had your. That's from your shower video. <laughs> yeah. Shower scene. Your commercial for Men's Fitness. Oh, is that what that's from? Yeah. Oh my God. Was, I think it was for an EAS supplement. <laughs> no, that one was the Men's Health. It was a part of that that, that advertisement. <laughs> Brady. Happy birthday, Happy Brady. Birthday. Forty. You I can't can believe my you're cake for me. I can't believe you're. For, I, I can't believe you're forty already. Thirty-seven. Amazing. Happy birthday, Brady. <laughs> Doesn't look a day over 40. <laughs> Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.